Hey guys, Doug here from Motion Raceworks. Today, uh, I wanna talk about the Air Motive five gallon, seven gallon, 10 gallon a minute variable speed brushless pump series. Uh, actually, that even goes further back into the Eliminator um, and some other pumps. That pump is uh, something I really love and uh, we've tested it, we've torture tested it, we've used it, we love it. There's really not too much that we like to change about it. One thing we get a lot of questions about is how to trigger it. So it's a variable speed. Let me explain what that means. Uh, because it's brushless, you can slow down the pump or speed it up without using a what's called a PWM module. And uh, what that means is there's a controller inside the pump um, housing and uh, sending it basically different signals or power levels allows you to speed it up or slow it down and that's perfect for street driving slash race scene uh having it be multi-purpose and the reason is is uh because it's brushless it doesn't make um really doesn't put any heat into the fuel there's no friction on the housing that would cause heat to go into fuel but running fuel past hot engine components exhaust transmission everything like that is going to still put heat into your fuel or can anyways. Um, obviously routing, insulation, everything can help that tremendously. So the question a lot of people give me is how do I do it? So basically the way it's designed is to take a signal from zero to five volts and between that it will take the pump from 30% duty cycle or 30% uh, speed and that's that basically is your zero volts on the trigger wire and at five at 3.7 volts actually it goes all the way to 100. So in between there, it's continuously variable. So you could actually hook it to a uh, TPS um, on your car and as you rev it up, the pump will speed up. You can hear it, you can do it that way, it works fine. Um, the problem is when you tap into a TPS signal, it can create a dirty uh, signal. And uh, you know if you've ever tuned and you have TPS signals that degrade and have issues, uh, you know that that's not something you're really interested in uh, doing. So I. I typically don't do it that way. Now, if you're running a stock ECU or a Holly um, that doesn't have a zero to five volt output uh, to be triggered by anything, Holly has zero to five volt inputs, um, you can't really use utilize that. But that's not a problem because the way I wire it is uh, something I think when I show you guys that will make a lot of sense. Basically what I do is I trigger my, the CO2 solenoids have po constant power on them um, once I activate this and then they're ground triggered to go up and down, obviously. Um, on that same switch, I trigger my air to water uh, ice tank, which if you have run on methanol or something, that's not applicable. Uh, but a lot of people have ice tanks, air to water tanks. Um, and then at the same time, I basically give that 12 volts to the pump. So a lot of people don't know that you can actually give it more than five volts, you can trigger it with zero, or you can trigger it with five volts, you can trigger it at 12 volts, you can trigger it all the way up to 16. Um, and basically, as soon as you give it above that 3.7 volts, um, no matter how high it is, it's just going to its max. And so basically what I'm doing there is at 30% fuel, I'm flowing, you know, a gallon and a half a minute. That's plenty for driving down the highway. I, heck, I can even do burnouts with it um, on like three pounds of boost, no problem. Um, what I don't get and what I try to uh, put through to people is when they want to hook it up to their TPS because they're like, I really want it to respond. Guys, you can plan when you're going to floor it in your car more than a second in advance. And uh, for me, being able to arm it, I have uh, what's called a boost switch on my uh, switch panel. So basically this switch is going to um, trigger not only uh, the CO2, the ice tank, but also the fuel. So basically this is my standard fuel pump gallon and a half. Uh, when I trigger this, it kicks that fuel pump up to full bore. And uh, basically I need all three of those things to safely make power on this rig, um, on my Nova, and it works extremely well. I can do a burnout and, you know, in the you know, on the line and stuff. I can wait to turn on the water pump for the ice tank. I can wait to turn on the CO2 solenoids till after I do my burnout, though I usually do it ahead of time just to cool off the intake before I make a pass. So that's how I wire it up. Um, I'll show you under the car uh, kind of what my setup is, but it works really well. It's really dependable. It's not tapping into any other signals and causing problems. And it's so easy. Um, like I said before, 
you know, if you're make if you're using five gallons a minute of fuel, you're in a car that's making a thousand plus horsepower. Um, so I think we can all plan ahead of time before we go ahead and make all that horsepower. So how I have things wired up here on my switch panel, uh, my ignition is separate of my fuel pump. I always like to have a fuel pump switch that's not controlled by the actual uh, the ECU. That way if I want to pump fuel or test the fuel pump, I can. So right here, the pump is at 1.5 gallons per minute. And as soon as I hit this, the pump goes to 100% duty cycle or about five gallons a minute. It's just that simple. So if you've watched my previous episodes, I kind of showed you the ball valve setups that we have under here. Um, I have a race fuel tank here, and then I have a street fuel. Sorry about how dirty it is. It's, I've been street driving the heck out of this thing lately. So basically I change the, turn the valve here, and then open that one up to switch it to race fuel. And then up top there is a, uh, there's a couple valves for the return. Um, and then down here I have my pump and my filter easily accessible and uh, as you can see on the power side of things I have the power and ground and then the trigger wire for the variable speed that's going to go right to that switch panel so that's a uh, low amperage switch uh, it can go right to the panel without a relay and then obviously your uh, power and your ground are going to need adequate size power and ground uh, to power this pump and that is going to matter depending on how long of a run of wire you have um, and then what pump. The five gallon a minute pump uses about 35 amps at full tilt and uh, the 10 gallon uses about 70. So um, just keep all that in mind as you're wiring things. So I hope that kind of explains things guys. You don't need to be continuously variable. The pump has the capability and that's great, but I can't see a need why you would want anywhere in the middle of 0% duty cycle up to the five gallon a minute. So one and a half to five. I'm not sure why you would ever need to be in that three range. Um, you have a return style fuel system, which means your regulator is bypassing all the fuel it doesn't need and sending it right back to the tank. So that's going. And uh, typically if you have things on full tilt, it's just for a few seconds anyways, 10, seven, six, five, whatever um, seconds. So having that thing go from uh one and a half gallons to five gallons um there's really no need to be in between so don't get caught up in the variability in that even though it has the ability to do so it's just not necessary and uh can cause you a lot more headaches in the long term if you're tapping in the sensors when you don't need to be hope that helps guys we're here to kind of torture test things ourselves learn show you and uh, recommend products that we think can be useful on your project thanks for tuning in don't forget to hit the subscribe button we have tons more videos like this coming and we hope you liked it we'll see you later